Hello and welcome. Happy Friday. We are here with another edition of Matt and Mike's Wine and Ad Tech program. Today we have a very special guest, an independent winemaker uh, and a wonderful guy, as you can tell by his Grateful Dead t-shirt, which we are all uh, unplanned representing today. Uh, it is wonderful. That is Jeremy. Uh, we're going to learn more about Jeremy and Tarpon Cellars in a minute. Uh, but Matt here, he's a certified sommelier, a CES. Mike, I work for Centro, so I know a little bit about ad tech, and that's why we're here hosting the show. We will be your tour guides through the cosmos. So Jeremy, uh, thank you for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about Tarpon Cellars and, um, you know, the part of the reason we had you on is it's such a cool story and such a cool uh, concept. Yeah, absolutely. No, thanks for having me on. And um yeah, I, I graduated uh, college in 2006, and like a lot of people, I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do. Um, and I wanted to, you know, I was trying to get into the food and wine industry and um, couldn't really find anything in Atlanta. I wanted to actually open a wine bar. Um, and my dad pointed out that, you know, you don't know a ton about, about wine, actually. <laughs> and uh, at that point, it, he was uh, right. And so... Um, I got a internship, um, an internship at a, a small family winery in Napa Valley uh, for spring 2007. So I kind of packed everything that I owned uh, into my truck and drove out here. And, uh, you know, that was, um, I guess, about 14, 13, 14 years ago. And so um, I worked at a few different wineries uh, up, up and down the valley, Chapelet, Duckhorn, um, and, um, you know, learned a ton and, uh, about, I guess, three years ago, um, we wanted to start a brand, um, and kind of, um, you know, showcase some of the things that I've learned, uh, in my career in Napa, but also, you know, kind of create this community around like music and wine and philanthropy and have it be kind of something that's a little bit bigger than just a, just a wine brand. So, um, 2017 was our first vintage. And uh, we did a cab and a Saab Blanc from Shiflet Ranch uh, in Oak Knoll. And then uh, since then, we've actually added four wines to the uh, portfolio. Um, yeah, we just, you know, we kind of like to, to have fun and do some live events. And uh, music is a big part of what we do. Um, we actually do a, a Spotify playlist um, on the back of each wine that we produce. And so it's curated for that wine. It's kind of like a music and wine pairing so yeah i'm just trying to uh, to have fun with it yeah that's, a, that's awesome obviously a great fit for this crew as we have a music and wine pairing uh segment of the show that's great and then you want to talk a little bit about the philanthropy i think that's the other great thing especially um during this time mm -hmm. I, I love uh brands that you know are aware that we're lucky to do something like buy sell and drink wine yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have um, some really close friends of mine that I know you know as well, um, uh, Melissa Dean and J.B. Pinkston. Um, their son was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis um, about four years ago. And so from the beginning when we started this company, um, a dollar from every bottle goes to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation of Georgia. Um, and so that's been kind of just baked into our, our business model and and um, what we found is that, you know, anything that we can do as a company, uh, you know, it's, it's good for us, but also it helps people that are, um, you know, they're purchasing our wine, feel like they're doing something, contributing to, you know, a greater good and not just spending, you know, 30 bucks on a bottle of wine that they like. So um, it's been really helpful for us. And, um, you know, as things are happening now, obviously, we're, we're figuring out ways that we can help out in our community in different ways. And, um, you know, supporting musicians is kind of a, a new project that I've been working on. Um, we worked with Newport Folk Fest last week, actually. Um, all of our, or 20% of all of our online wine sales uh, got directed to the Newport Festival's Musicians Relief Foundation. Um, and we're actually working on some things of our own to, uh, you know, kind of help these artists that are, that are unable to tour right now. Um, you know, we, our tasting room is closed, but I mean, we have online sales and we're somewhat of a functioning business. And so I feel like we kind of have this responsibility to, um, help out the guys that are that are unable to stay open right now, like restaurants and musicians and, and all of our friends in hospitality. So yeah, that's it's great. That's great. I think, um, I think anyone again who who knows is uh, music may seem frivolous until you don't have it anymore. Uh, and then it then it becomes a real problem. So um, excited about that. All right. So what are we all drinking? 
I'll tell you what I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking the uh, Gambaro from Tarpon right here. And I got... Same here. We got three of us. We're all yeah. awesome. today. It's, it's almost as if we planned it. So I, this is the <laughs> first time we've actually drank on the show live, um, which is sad. But uh, let's give it a go here. Took a big old sip of that. And that <laughs> nice two thirty in the afternoon. Red. Look at what a polite. Something to wake yeah, the palate up. Yeah, I, I had some uh, hot sauce that really woke it up. <laughs> it's great. I uh, yeah, I, very very like uh, light fruity. It actually kind of reminds me. Last week I mentioned um, a uh, it was two weeks ago um, a Pinot that. Uh, that was super light that I was getting kind of from uh, PAX that was just like this summer effervescent, maybe even a little chilled. I did not chill this. What do you think, Jeremy? Would you, would you chill it to a little extent? It kind of has that vibe to me. So yeah, totally. I threw it in the fridge for 10 minutes. Um, it's definitely a summer, a summer red. I mean, a lot of our customers um, and a lot of our wine club members are in the South you know, Georgia, Florida, um, Tennessee, Texas. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's funny because I live in the, the heart of Cabernet country and I make, you know, a lot of Cabernet uh, and I've been making Cabernet for 15 years. And, um, but the, with our climate that's similar to the South, like, you know, when it's 110 degrees outside and I'm like on a porch at 8 p.m., I'm not, I'm not pulling out a Cabernet. Like, um, yeah. and so I wanted to make a wine that something that uh, was something that kind of fit into my lifestyle and what I feel like a lot of people you know, reach for in the summer. Um, so yeah, this is, you know, the carbonic aspect of it. Carbonic maceration is a technique that I've used before and um, we used it for this one about 80%. And um, yeah, it's just something that's really fun, really light on the palate. And um, yeah, it's a fun wine, especially for people that like Beaujolais, I find it to be, uh, to be pretty cool. Is there a reason you chose uh, to use Nebbiolo grape to use carbonic, uh, carbonic on for this wine? Yeah, I mean, so some of it is just, um, you know, finding a grape that's unique that, um, I mean, this is a red blend. Technically, we have a couple of other varieties in there. Uh, there's actually even some Verdejo in there that we co-fermented. Um, but Nebbiolo cool. is something that naturally has a lot of tannin. Um, and so, and when you make a carbonic wine, obviously, like you're taking away a lot of the, um, the chance for these tannins to integrate and to, um, to get picked up. So I thought that choosing a little bit higher tannin grape uh, would kind of help balance it out in a way that maybe you don't necessarily see from a lot of, of carbonic wines. So, um, yeah, this is like super light in color, um, especially probably in the bottle, you can see it even more. I mean, it's translucent, um, but, you know, it's got a little bit of a tannin on the end that kind of gives it that finish of almost like a Pinot, like you were saying, um, Mike. So, yeah, it's, it, just, it turned out really well. I mean, it was totally experimental when we did it. I'd never done a carbonic nebbio. I don't know if anybody's done a carbonic nebbio. Before. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Try it and, there needs uh, to be more chillable reds, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. you've said that before. It is sitting out yeah. in a whole lot longer than I expected looking at the color, which is kind of nice. I like that finish. Um, all right, awesome. So we, uh, we talked about the carbonic. What can, do we just give like a brief definition of what that means? Yeah, absolutely. So Typically in a red wine fermentation, um, you will uh, destem and crush the the um, you know the grapes and the skins and the seeds and everything into uh, into a tank and it's, that's called the must. And so you ferment uh, with oxygen on the must, and that's how you extract all those polyphenols that are in the skins. Um, what we do with this is we actually just throw it into a tank, whole cluster, still on the stems without crushing anything. Um, we put a little bit of CO2 in there, so there's no oxygen. So it's technically an anaerobic uh, environment. It's all just CO2. And the berries, uh, the fermentation happens in, the, in each individual berry. So it's actually like on an intracellular level. Um, and there's a whole bunch of, uh, probably for most people, boring stuff with enzymes and stuff. And things that That's happen. great. But basically, cool it, it lifts the nose, and these enzymes create like these... Um, these esters that are in alcohol um, that, you know, a lot of them are 
you know, cherry, berry, strawberry. Um, I, a lot of times get even like banana, like banana Laffy Taffy I have in the tasting notes for this wine. Um, I get the strawberry pretty heavy on the front side. That's totally. And crushed cranberry. And so, um, yeah, it just makes it a really like kind of fun, you know, a lot of high tone red fruit, uh, notes to it. Nice. Awesome. So, uh, we're on to the ad tech portion. What is, you have any questions? <laughs> it's almost as if we planned this. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of questions. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so it's really interesting for us. I mean, um, you know, we, we've sold wine out of our tasting room. We have distribution channels. And then obviously in light of everything that's happening right now, um, those are unavailable to us. And so we've always done a healthy, you know, amount of online sales uh, and considered, you know, social as a way to grow our business. But I think a lot of small independent producers like myself are starting to, you know, if not pivot more, start to understand what digital advertising is. Um, and, you know, I, like we're a, we're a one man show, so I don't have this huge, you know, advertising budget that I'm going to just tap into. Uh, so I need to be smart about what I'm doing. If you are advising somebody like me and uh, companies like ours, you know, what, what's one thing that you can do to get started or what's the, the most efficient way that you can spend the, the dollars that you do have, um, you know, what direction would you point us in? Yeah, I mean, I think the, you know, my initial reaction is always, um, if you have 350 bucks to spend on advertising, you should buy a sandwich board for a hundred bucks and then take your best friend or spouse out to dinner with the other 250 and enjoy some wine because uh, you're just not going to make a splash. And especially selling wine nationwide, even worldwide, uh, it's very difficult to pinpoint an audience in such a large space. So my advice is typically to start at an organic or free level, right? Get on Facebook, even if you think nobody else is there. I heard a guy once say the least cool party to attend is a party with your parents. And uh, your parents are on Facebook, but go to, go to Facebook uh, get get an audience there, go to Instagram, get an audience there, um, and post content, as much content as you can, right? The algorithms are a black box, but what they do want is interaction and people building content, right? They're monetizing the idea that you're putting in work to build this content. So the more content you build, the more it's going to appear in people's feeds uh, and, and with the algorithm. So get as much content as you can out there and get as much free fans as you can that you can interact with in a real way to grow your your base uh email addresses free email lists um all the stuff you're doing with music all of that stuff is is a really great story to tell around a brand right you want to make sure that your messaging is consistent that your branding is consistent and that you you know you feel like a real person, real company to your fans. And, and the organic way is the best way to do that. Once you get to a paid level, I think it's understanding there's no silver bullet. And certainly uh, from a paid level, it's you're going to have to try and fail and you're going to have to see what works. Uh, once you get the results, you can kind of make a decision uh, with that test budget, what worked, what didn't, and then try to focus down on that. So, uh, you know, a bit of a non-answer to an extent, but I, I think the the very first thing you have to do is build up that organic base. Uh, we always offer, <clears throat> and this is for all my ad tech friends, all my advertising friends, all my marketing friends, we always offer a gift certificate uh, to a wine store or a charitable donation in your honor. Uh, if you have any advice, if you have any thoughts, comment below. Um, and let Jeremy know what you would do or let Jeremy know if you think you have an idea that could help. Uh, shoot him a note and let's see if we can uh, find a great way for independent winemakers to get their message out. And you might win a gift card. All right, education is done. Let's get to the fun stuff. Wine and music or wine and movie pairing. I will start with Matt. Awesome. So, um, <clears throat> I decided to use the um, Cambaro from Tarpon, the Carbonic uh, Nebbiolo, pairing that with Cross-Eyed and Painless of the Talking Heads, because it's a uh, it's light, fun, funky song, kind of easy to get into it, and uh, that's how this wine is to me. It's kind of light, easy drinking. It's got some nice zippiness to it, and uh, you know we're all just stuck inside, still waiting. 
<laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Man, some people are going to love this episode. <laughs> <laughs> or hate it. Or, yeah. Uh, Jeremy, what about, what about you? What do you got for a wine and music or movie pair? Okay. Um, so I, I did, I went a step further. I did a wine, food, and music pairing. So I want to give a, um, a shout out to my guys down at uh, Pelican Oyster Company. Um, it's down in Panacea, Florida. Um, they grow some great oysters down there and uh, they're actually shipping. So when I realized that I can't go to a restaurant, I mean, Sauv Blanc and Oysters is like my, if that was my last meal, if I was on death row, it would be Sauv Blanc and Oysters. Mm -hmm. so, totally. <laughs> this is like, and I hadn't had uh, oysters in, you know, six weeks or however long we've right. been doing this. And then I realized that uh, some of these small producers are, um, are small growers are shipping oysters. So uh, Pelican Oysters, Panacea, also Hog Island is shipping online. So um, I did the Tarpon Sauv Blanc, um, some oysters, and then uh, we actually do a playlist for the Sauv Blanc. Um, and our Sauv Blanc is kind of tropical, um, kind of has like a beach a beach vibe, you know, a lot of pineapple and guava and smells like suntan lotion. So um, uh, we did a playlist that's, that's perfect for that. And uh, actually, let me see if I can pull a specific song from that playlist to give a good example. Uh, let's see. So uh, here comes Sunshine, uh, the real Love estate, it. the real mm -hmm. estate cover of that that's on that uh, Day of the Dead album. Uh, nice. That's nice. Uh, so that's the rest of them are kind of like that, you know, really sunny and uh, awesome. Cool, so. Awesome. I am. Uh, I'm going to stay on theme with the uh, borrow red here from Tarpon, and uh, of course I went to the playlist, and of course I looked at what on here appeals to me, and I mean, sneak and Sally through the alley, the Robert Palmer. Oh yeah. I would have been. I would have been crucified had I not chosen that particular song for <laughs> many reasons, uh, which are obvious to some, but um, it's very strange to go back and listen to like the Robert Palmer music beyond um, uh, what's Addicted to Love, is that the, his big yeah. hit? Uh, quite an interesting band with a lot of great music and Sneak and Sally is one of them. Uh, and there is the, the sneaky tannins in here, man. I get it. It's like, it looks really light and then it comes with those, uh, with that long finish, so it's kind of nice. Um, all right, Matt, do you have any food you, uh, you've been pairing in quarantine? So um, tonight I'm looking forward to uh, another string cheese incident live stream every Friday. <laughs> and so pairing that with a stovetop mac and cheese with bacon and jalapenos, um, and nothing goes better with mac and cheese than Chardonnay. So I picked this Del Air Graf uh, Chard from South Africa. Um, absolutely amazing. If you guys have any doubts about Chardonnay from South Africa, pick up a bottle of this and it'll blow your mind. Um, I would put that up against a lot of other higher end Chardonnay. It is absolutely tasty. So that, nice. that and mac and cheese, can't beat it. Love it, love it. I, um, I can't remember if I mentioned pastrami before, but I eat almost exclusively pastrami as often as possible. Um, and tonight I will be undoubtedly cracking the Sauv Blanc from Tarpon and finding out if you take two things you really love that may or may not seem to match on paper, does it really matter? As uh, Francis Mallman, I believe said, drink the wine you like with the food you like. So. I will let you know if uh, Saab Blanc and Pastrami go together, but my guess is they absolutely do. I think they will. <laughs> awesome. Well, appreciate it, guys. Uh, thanks so much for the time. Any last uh, shout out words? We'll put some, we'll put all the links of the lines we talked about and everything else, all the songs, the music in the notes section. Please comment below for a chance to win. Any uh, final words of wisdom for the, the crowd out there? I'll say, uh, just tell people, encourage them to keep supporting. Uh, I've had a lot of questions of like, what should I be drinking? And uh, I would say, go to a local, local independent store and make friends with someone there and they will not steer you wrong. Um, just support some local business, buy local wine and, um, and uh, yeah, develop a relationship and they'll start to recommend some good stuff for, for you people at home looking for new things. That's how we met, Matt. Yeah, <laughs> you you never know who you're gonna meet. Yeah, 
And Jeremy, any uh, anything else you want to leave us with? Thank you again so much for joining us. No, thanks Thank for having me. Uh, I can just do uh, one more album wreck. I've been listening to a lot of uh, Without a Net lately. Uh, yes. 89, Dead. Um, Branford Marsalis is on uh, Eyes of the World playing uh, saxophone, I believe. Um, uh, pretty incredible album. Brent Midland. Shout out Brent Midland. That's all I, I am Midland till I, I love die. It. Midland till I die. And our mutual friend, uh, Mike Dean, returned me onto it. And the Feel Like a Stranger opening is just like the happiest part of my day. And the Eyes of the World is 100%. So, so I can't wait to throw that on. Go check Good out recommendation. the recommendation. Uh, all right. Take care, everybody. We'll see Thanks, you guys. Sweet comment below. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you.